Hi, this is Clayton with ICEV, um, and thanks for joining us for the STEM and Agriculture Science session. We're excited to have uh, Dr. Randy Webb with us today from Hillsville, Virginia. Uh, hello, Dr. Webb. Hello, how are you? Doing great, thanks. Um, before we get started with your presentation, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I grew up in Southwest Virginia on a commercial beef cattle farm. Um, I went to Virginia Tech, earned my PhD in agriculture leadership and community education. Also earned uh, graduate certificates in integrative STEM education and educational research. So today I'm hoping to talk to you guys a little about STEM and agriculture sciences. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about the, the high school that you teach at. Way back in 1917, uh, the Carroll County School System, which I am in, was the first school system in the nation under the Smith Hughes Act to get vocational agriculture education. Uh, just a couple of years, or a few years ago, we were one of the first to have a STEM lab dedicated to agriculture education, which was also the first in the nation. So. We've been very fortunate in our program. We have a three-teacher program, which we offer everything from natural resources, horticulture, greenhouse, biotechnology, welding, um, agriculture production. So our kids have a lot of opportunities in agriculture at our high school. Wow, that's wow. awesome. Well, uh, thanks for joining us today, and let's just uh, hop into your presentation. Thank you, Clayton, for that introduction. And welcome to the STEM and Agricultural Science Workshop. I'm Dr. Randy Webb, and over the next 20 minutes or so, we'll be discussing what STEM is, my philosophy about STEM, how that I incorporate it into my classes, and a sample problem that you could incorporate into your classes. Let's dive right in. What is STEM? For the past several years, STEM has been the focus in education. There have been numerous attempts to force science, technology, engineering, and mathematics into lesson plans. There have been collaboration between educational departments within schools where the science teacher, math teacher, and English teachers come together and work to develop lessons that focus on the strength of each department. Sometimes students have a hard time connecting the dots between the lessons. Through educational reform, we hear buzzwords like problem solving, critical thinking, teamwork, real world applications, and life skills. I like adding connecting concepts and procedures. To me, making sure that I cover all the bases is what I define as an integrative STEM education. Over the past 10 or 12 years, I have developed my pedagogy to be STEM integrating without forcing STEM into the lessons. You know, it really just happens because it's agriculture. I've always felt strongly that you cannot teach any agricultural content without it being STEM education. So when I sit down to develop my lesson plans, I don't have a checklist that I mark when I have all the STEM components in the lesson. I start each lesson with an expected outcome. I formulate goals for what I want my students to accomplish. In developing these lessons, I focus on the content and the competencies required for each class. All lessons will not have STEM components in it. I also incorporate projects into my class that last an entire semester. Uh, these are semester-long projects, and they're all content-oriented. The group will research a topic. They'll brainstorm solutions. They'll create models to test their solutions. They'll refine and adjust their models, present a project with a research paper, a poster, and a model at the end of course. This project presentation will serve as the student's final exam. This works in all of my classes, with the exception of my introduction to veterinary science course. I use lecture, weekly labs, 
and the ICEV Veterinary Medical Application Certification Module and give the certification exam as my final exam. So, how to integrate this semester-long project into your classes? Well, as I said earlier, at the beginning of the semester, I introduce an agricultural problem which usually relates to some type of current trend or issue in agriculture. This introduction can come through le lectures, uh, guest speakers. Sometimes we like to bring in industry leaders, uh, research scientists from the university who are always happy to share their current research projects or what they're working with with secondary students because this gives them an opportunity to recruit students for their programs. Uh, we may be using current publications, whether it be trade magazines or research journals. So there's a lot of material out there that you can incorporate and do a content related project. We discuss these problems in class and then I have the students to research the problems. I have the students write a review of the research. Uh, I always require that they have a minimum of three good sources that they're writing the review from. I do not allow my students to use wikis or Google search, things that they find on the internet. I always want to make sure that they have good science-based or trade-based information that they're researching from. At the beginning of the semester, I place students into groups of four or five, and these groups will work together the entire semester. Now, using what they discovered, they formulate a solution by brainstorming. So together in their groups, they sit down and they come up with a number of ideas that will solve the problem that they are working on. Now, once the groups have gathered their ideas during their brainstorming session, we bring the class back together and on the whiteboard, we let one person from each group come up and write down uh, the solutions that they've came up with. We will discuss those solutions and determine which are the best solutions that the class is presenting then each group will select a solution to solve the problem. They will test their solutions, refine and adjust. One of the best learning tools in this project-based application is that the students are going to fail. And this is something a lot of students are not accustomed to. Failure is not in their vocabulary, but we turn failure into a good thing because it becomes a learning process that if they don't get it right, they can come back and refine and adjust their solution. And from there, they can build a model or a final project. Uh, we like for the students to track uh, what they're doing. And at the end, they will write a research paper they will develop a poster that explains the project and they will present the final project to an outside group. And one of the things that is the highlight of the semester long project is this final presentation. It's sort of funny to see the kids getting nervous about the presentation before people come in and see what they've done. And we invite industry leaders, um, faculty members from the university to come, uh, those that can. Uh, our semester usually ends after the university, so sometimes it's a little tricky catching those professors before they leave campus to come out and see what we've done. But we also want to make sure that we invite local school administrators, school board members, come out and see what the students are doing also. And this is just an added benefit because the administrators and school board like to see what they're doing and it builds up support for your programs. 
So, as promised, here is a sample problem. Uh, it's pretty generic, and this is one that could be used in any metal fabrication or ag mechanics class. It's where you have a local farmer come in who wants a trailer built. Um, he states his specific needs, and you present this problem to the students to have them to come up and develop a solution within their groups. In continuing with this sample problem, here's an outline of what this semester long project would look like. In the left hand column, you will see STEM lessons that would go along with this project. Many of these lessons are found in the ICEV resources. The project would begin at the beginning of the semester and at which time I would encourage the students to keep a record of each step in the project in a journal. They'll research the trailer, the materials, and the, the design. They'll design their trailer, create a bill of materials and a cost, determine the equipment needed to construct the trailer. They will build a model and evaluate the model, uh, make any changes to the model if it's needed. Then they will actually construct the trailer. At the end of the semester, they'll present their project they will have available the records that they've kept, a formal paper, a finished project, and a poster that explains the project. I want to thank you for sitting in on today's workshop on STEM and agriculture science. I know this has been a quick uh, review of what I think STEM education and agriculture is. I have listed my contact information on this slide, so if you have any questions that you would like to ask, feel free to email me. I'll be glad to respond back to you. Again, I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to participate in this workshop. And with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Clayton. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Webb. Um, before we end here today, I did want to talk a little bit about some of the STEM elements that we are trying to incorporate into our courses here at ICEV. We have developed what's called a lab challenge uh, video. And if you look here, I'm logged into our wildlife fisheries and oncology management course. And we have, you'll see right here, these uh, third and fourth lesson here. We have a lab challenge video that talks about the water cycle. Um, there is a student version and there is also a teacher version and let's view that teacher version real quick because it's going to have everything that the student version has has just more information that would be relevant to the teacher and so what we've done is we have taken a lab experiment um, that applies what they've learned in some of the other lessons found within this course and we videoed that lesson and I'm just going to mute this here, but I'm going to hit the play button and hopefully you can see that on your end. And basically it is a couple of teachers in classroom teachers and they are going through this experiment step by step. Um, and so they can provide um, that guidance on how to do this in your classroom. I'm going to pause it real quick. And I wanted to show you over here that there's going to be a lab introduction. So why, why are we doing this lab? I'm going to go through the lab procedures. I'm going to talk about, about data collection and then also going to explain the results. Now, again, some of these elements will not be on the student side of things because we don't want them to know the results, but we wanted to provide those explanation of results for the teacher. Additionally, we provided some extension opportunities. Um, so if their time allows, or if you have a group of students that wanted to explore further, then we try to um, provide some extension opportunities for this lab challenge as well. What comes along with this from a printable standpoint or from a curriculum type standpoint, if I uncollapse this, then they're going to um, have a lab report. There's also an instruction sheet for the teacher that we're gonna want you to begin with like a pre-lab check. So to cover any safety things that the students need to go through before they begin the lab or any understanding of concepts that they might need to have before they begin that lab. And then they can go through the lab. And again, they can do the lab inside um, the classroom. 
Or let's say maybe you had a student that was absent or something like that, or maybe they were homebound for some reason, or in light of our current situation uh, with the COVID uh, uh, environment, perhaps they could just watch the lab. And so they, say they can still see what happens in the lab, and then at the end they can fill out that lab report. So right now we have three of these lab challenges that are incorporated inside this wildlife fisheries and ecology course. We have this one on the water cycle. We have one on soil erosion in a bottle. And then we also have one that's called wetland in a pan. So again, these are um, challenges that bring that STEM element, that lab element to this course and help students better understand and apply that knowledge that they've learned in the other lessons found with inside that course. This lab challenge um, element is something that we intend to add more to, um, add more of, if you will, to our courses throughout the fall. So make sure and um, check your newsletter um, for those. And as they're available, we'll make sure and share those with you. I hope everyone can stick around and join us for our Q&A session.